Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 20. And this is the story of Jesus' resurrection. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The God shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his, his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had, all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had de designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, this morning we came to celebrate Jesus' resurrection and we came to honor him for his sacrifice on the cross. And this is one of the most important days in, in, the, um, in, in the year because it's the day that Jesus won over death. He defeated death and he allowed us to also defeat death. Because of his death and his sacrifice, we don't have to fear death. We know that when we die, we'll have an eternal life in heaven with him. And before I began making this message, I, I wondered why we, um, why we have a sunrise service, why the service is at sunrise. And the reason behind it is because when Mary and the others went to the tomb to see Jesus, it was sunrise. The sun was rising and a new day was beginning. And so it was God's plan for it to happen at that moment. You see, God plans everything and his plan is always perfect. And so just like the the um, new day was beginning, we also have a new heart when we find Christ. When they went to the tomb, Jesus was missing because he had risen and he was alive. And so when that day began, it was a great day because it was the day that Jesus rose from the dead and defeated death. And that's what we'll do when we become new. When we become new like the day was new, we also defeat death and we no longer have to fear it. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3, say, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. You see, all of us have darkness in our hearts. There's darkness all around the world, as we see with all of the violence that's happening and the, the killings and wars. But Christ is the light that shines through all of that. You see, we always have hope and an eternal hope when we have Christ in our lives. 
because we know that everything will be okay. Even though we may be suffering right now while we're on earth, we'll know that we have an eternal life free of suffering. Jesus said that when we're in heaven, every tear will be, will be wiped away. So there'll be no more suffering, and there'll be no more sadness and no more violence, and certainly no more wars. You see, Jesus' suffering allows us to be free of suffering once we leave this life and enter the next in heaven. And so when we're led to the cross, we're led there through the actions of other people, through, through God's love and through our, through our encounters with Christ. Christ has a plan for us. And when we follow that plan that he has for us, and we go down the narrow path that he set for us, we're led to the cross. And so because of that, we're led to eternal life. The free gift of salvation is for everyone, and the cross is for everyone. We were led here this morning to this cross because of your love for God. Jesus is, is uh, very happy with all of you for coming because he understands that we don't like to get up early. And so when we, when we make sacrifices like that for Christ, like getting up early or, or giving some kind of tithe or offering, he sees that and he will, um, he will reward us for that. See, so often we're, we're worried about um, earning treasures on this earth, like money and, and uh, uh, possessions. But when we do simple things, simple sacrifices like this, God allows us to experience reward in heaven that will last forever. See, all of our rewards here are, are only temporary. And so while we might enjoy them for a while, for a few years, they'll all um, be gone one day. But when we enter heaven, when we come to Christ and we enter heaven, we'll have those rewards that he has for us forever. And that's a promise that he gives us. And Jesus always keeps his promises. He predicted his death on the cross, and he also predicted his resurrection. And because of his prediction, it ended up happening. Because he knew it was God's plan, he knew it was the Father's plan, and because he knew it was his plan, he decided to, he decided to go through with it. And he also decided to go through with it, mainly because of his love for us. Despite all of our wrongdoings and all of our sins, Jesus still decided to die on the cross for us, because he saw the cross, and he saw us, and he decided that we were worth it. And that's a kind of love that none of us can really comprehend. Christ's love for us is infinitely greater than we can ever imagine. And so when Jesus was on that cross, well, before he was on the cross, he was mocked, he was beaten, whipped, and a crown of thorns was placed on his head. And he suffered for a long time. I, look, I, I did some research and I found that he likely suffered from anywhere between three and six hours. And while that, that may not seem like a very long time, for him it was. Because the pain that he endured for us was probably one of the worst deaths in all of history. And yet Jesus was the most innocent man to ever walk the earth. He's the only one that never sinned and never turned his back on God. But even though he was perfect and he wasn't worthy of any kind of punishment, he still went on the cross and was nailed to the cross for us. Every, every sin and wrongdoing that we've ever done in our lives was put on him so that we wouldn't have to be punished for it, and we could have eternal life. You see, experiencing God's love leads us to the cross, because the love that we experience from God is unlike any other that we can experience on earth. And so, when we accept Christ and we choose to, to follow him, we, we, we thank him for his sacrifice, and we, le we live a, a fruitful, fruitful and prosperous life. And that's something that something else that Jesus promises us. He'll never leave us and he'll never abandon us, even though we so often leave and abandon him. And it's it's really hard to imagine what what Jesus went through without actually seeing it. We can read it in the Bible and we can we can read stories of it, but we can never truly know how how bad it was for him. But no matter how bad it was, Jesus had that had that. Um, knowledge that he was going to defeat death and when when he was on that cross he thought about all of us and he understood that what he was doing was for us and because he loves us so much he was willing to do it and he was willing to suffer just for us because he loves us so much he loves us more than we can ever comprehend 
And so we're led here today to honour that sacrifice. We're here to give thanks and to honour him for his for his um, love and sacrifice for us. And because of his sacrifice, we no longer have to fear death. Death has no power over us, just like it had no power over him. John, John chapter 1 verse, verse 5 says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. As I just mentioned, there is darkness all around us, because all around us there's sin. And we sin every day, and we fail every day, and so we are sin. But when Christ, Christ's light pierces through the darkness, he enters our hearts, and he washes all of that sin and darkness away. All of the darkness that we have disappears because of his righteousness. We're cleansed through his blood and his sacrifice on the cross. But I've talked so much about his death and his sacrifice on the cross that it's important that we have to remember that Christ rose from the dead and he, he overcame all of that. We don't serve a dead Christ. We don't honor a dead Christ and we don't, we don't follow a dead Christ. Rather, we serve a living Christ because Christ has risen and Christ is alive. And Christ will come again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 22 say, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as, at, for as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will, all will be made alive. Nobody comes to the Father but through him. Nobody else can save us. None of our possessions can save us. We certainly can't buy our way into heaven. And we can't work our way into heaven either. It's only, th it's only through Jesus' blood that we're able to enter heaven. You see, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ came to give, save, and love. Christ gives us a, a, um, an eternal life in heaven. And all we have to do is accept his sacrifice and accept him. Christ comes to save all of us from all of our sin. All of us are, are, are trapped and are prisoners of our own sin. But because Christ came and because he died for us on the cross, we're no longer um, stuck in our own sin. We're made free from it and we're given an eternal life, the free gift of eternal life through him. And most importantly, Christ came to love. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. Before he came, all of us were, were lost. We, the, um, the human race thought that they had it all figured out, but um, we realize now that we, that was far from the truth. Jesus came to, to, to share God's love and to tell us how to live and to, to glorify God through his, his miracles and through his, his preaching. And so because of, because of Christ's sacrifice, because of his, his entrance into our hearts and into our lives, we are made new, just like this day is made new. We can see the sun rising behind us, and just like the sun is rising, Christ rose from the dead, and we will also rise, once we die, into heaven with him. And so I want to end this message today by encouraging all of you to remember Christ's death and Christ's sacrifice. And also remember his resurrection as we celebrate and eat in the, in the hut today and spend time with family and friends. I encourage you all to remember the, the real reason behind, behind today. Remember, remember Christ's sacrifice and remember his resurrection from the dead and celebrate and honor him as much as possible. And it's also a good, a good time to reflect on our own lives and reflect on our relationship with him. All of, us have, <clears throat> all of us have room for improvement. All of us are able to, to form a strong, stronger connection and relationship with him. And so I encourage you today to, to look for ways to, to honor him. Even if, even if it's something that seems very simple, Christ will still recognize it, and you will be honoring him when you do it. So take the time today to thank him for his sacrifice and celebrate his resurrection and celebrate his and our uh, defeat over death. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Let's go to the Lord for our closing prayer. Father God, once again, we just want to say thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for your sacrifice on the, on the cross. And, we, and today we celebrate your, your resurrection and your victory over death. Lord, we thank you for your never-ending love for us. We thank you for your never-ending grace and forgiveness. And we thank you for your, for your never-ending mercy. Lord, we know that without you, our salvation wouldn't be possible. And without you, we would be lost and stuck in our own sin for all eternity. So, Lord, we thank you for setting us free from sin. We thank you for piercing the darkness with your light. And Lord, we just ask that you enter our hearts and minds today and that the Holy Spirit may surround us, not just this morning, but for all of the days of our life. We ask that you help us to, to come closer to you. We ask that you strengthen our, our relationship and connection with you and that we're able to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, and that you help us to follow your word and always honor you in everything that we do. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.